Rub up your engines! Pendleton King says, Hey, Scotty, I've been to cars all my life with my hobby, but I'm thinking about giving up my passion for them. What do you think? You know, people go through different stages in life. I'm getting older now. Hopefully, I'm getting wiser. And as you get older and wiser, you realize really prophetic things like, you came into life with nothing and you leave with nothing. So if you base your life on collecting things, maybe not such a smart idea. <laughs> People do get care. We live in a neurotic society. What? Sigmund Freud once said that neurosis is the basis of all civilization. So <laughs> a lot of times people do get too neurotic. They collect a bunch of stuff. They have, you know, you really want to be more balanced in your life. And yeah, I mean, if you had fun with it and you like touring around a little, go ahead. But you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I remember a guy used to live next to us when we were growing up. He had a garage and he was always in the garage messing around with little cars. He'd fix them all up. Then he had to pay the guy to paint them and then he'd sell them and then he'd fix another one up. Well, he was in there all the time mainly because he couldn't stand his wife. <laughs> Me, I like my horse, so I'm not hiding in the garage, you know? But he was, so you gotta look at an overall life perspective on stuff like that. And maybe as you get older, you decide, eh, well, I've had enough of that. Well, then you go on to another phase. That actually is a very smart thing to do. Mr. Hall Kid says, hey, I'm starting a car shop and I'm tired finding a 2003 Four runner for two grand. Been looking for three months. I see a lot of GMC envoys. What do you think of that? Between a rock and a hard place there. That's almost an impossible task to find a good one. They're popular vehicles. They're expensive to begin with. Not spending enough money. Yeah, you can get GMCs for that price. They're generally pieces of junk that are falling apart by then. If you could find a Toyota, it is going to be old as the hill if you could find one for two grand. They go for high dollar because they're well made. If I were you, I try to rust up a little bit more money maybe borrow money from somebody something because for two grand you're going to be hard pressed to find a decent vehicle in that range for that price now maybe you can change your idea a plane truck or a sedan but if you got to get one of those suv trucks you're going to be hard pressed to find anything decent in the $2,000 range. I mean, look around. Maybe somebody died and it's an estate sale. Or maybe somebody joined the army and they got to sell the car or whatever. Or you can take up payments on it or something. But for $2,000, you're really not going to find much out there in the market in most places for that kind of small change for a popular vehicle. You want a popular vehicle, you pay more money. That's how it works <laughs> in the capitalist world we live in. You find something that isn't as popular, hey, you might get a good deal, but not in an SUV. They're too popular. You're going to have a hard time finding anything decent in that price range. But don't buy the GMC. At that price range, it's going to be a piece of junk that's falling apart. I know more than you think, says. Got an 08 Jeep Patriot. Four-wheel drive, 2.4 liter. My fuel tank is difficult to fill. A little bit at a time, and there's no codes at all. I paid a guy to replace the fuel tank filler too, but it still does the same thing. Help. I can tell you it's probably wrong, but you're not going to like it. Those Jeeps, as I tell people, you know, I'll be very leery about buying those things. Their quality control is bad. Unfortunately, the only way you can fix it is by replacing the entire fuel tank. It's integral to the fuel tank. You can't buy the parts it's built into it. And I mean, it's sad but true. When those fuel tank roller valves go bad and you can't fill it, you got to replace the whole gas tank. Yet another reason not to buy those cheap Chrysler made products. But unfortunately, you have it. So odds are you're going to have to buy another fuel tank. My advice is try to find an aftermarket one where you won't have to go to the dealer to buy the outrageously expensive one there. Willie's got fleece says, I got an 07 GMC truck, Acadia, all-wheel drive V6. I'm driving it. The dash warning light comes on and the dash lights go off. And I have the code PO622, generator F minus terminal circuit. I fixed the car a month ago with the same exact problem. Disconnect power wires to the alternator. Just unplug them to start it up. If you find that the cluster starts working, replace the alternator. Generally, when that happens, the alternator is shorting the system up. For some reason, the way those trucks are wired, GM always had wiring anomalies with those things anyways, with all their vehicles as far as they're concerned. Well, feedback when the alternator is shorting out, or it'll turn the dash off. You do that. Unplug all the wires to the alternator, start it up. If the dash starts working fine, just replace the 
the alternator. I fixed one like that, and once I figured that out, that's the first thing I test when I get one like that. I just unplug the alternator. It starts working again. I put a new alternator on it. It's probably going to be that simple. Alvarez 25 says, hey, my name's Roy Alvarez. I want to know if you can give me some advice. I got an 05 Mitsubishi Galant 3.8 V6. It makes a weird sound only when I first start to accelerate. Then it stops. Sounds like a clunky noise. It's in park and rev it up. It doesn't make it. Let's pray your CV joints are worn. Each half of the front has a drive axle, the left CV axle and the right CV axle. Each end of that axle has CV joints. They're covered with rubber boots and there's grease inside. Look under there and if you see the boots are ripped on them and the grease is leaked out, then you need new axles. You can buy brand new aftermarket ones cheap enough that sometimes there's as little as 59 bucks a piece. Don't try to fix them, just replace them. You pray it's that. Because if it isn't, then generally on those things, it means that the transmission's starting to go out. It is 15 years old. If the transmission's starting to go out, then you think, hmm, do I want to put that kind of money into that vehicle? Now, there is one other thing it could be, which you can also check yourself, and that's either the motor or the transmission mounts. If they're broken, when you take off, they can clunk. So I got a video, how to replace motor mounts in your car. Watch that, and it shows how you can test them by jacking the engine up, and if you jack it up, and then you see the mounts open and the rubber's broken, you need mounts. Pray it's one of those, and not the transmission going out. Steven1203 says, the inside of both of my tires have black fluid. Any ideas? That's brake fluid leaking. It's in the front, so generally, either your calipers are leaking, the seals that are on the cups inside, the pistons that go in and out, when they go bad, they leak in fluids, means you need new calipers, or the final bit of brake line that goes to your brake calipers is a rubber hose, because it's got to turn, so it's got to flex, it can't be all metal, and the rubber hose, if it's an old vehicle, will crack and leak, and then you got to replace it. Realize, it's probably your calipers, that's the more common thing, and there's absolutely, positively, nothing wrong with buying remanufactured calipers. They're simple devices. They're easy to remanufacture. Let's say the new ones cost 400 and you get rebuilt ones for 79 or something or even less. Go ahead and get the rebuilt ones. They work perfectly fine. They're a simple thing for a factory to rebuild. Now, don't try rebuilding yourself because they're usually rusty and cruddy. They need sandblasting. Sometimes they need board out and oversized seals. Let the pros rebuild them. And just buy the whole things rebuilt. Bitcoin 25 says, I don't want squeaking doors. How often should I spray white lithium grease on my car latches and door hinges. You know, lithium lasts quite some time. If you do it like once or maybe twice a year max, it should be perfectly fine. But that's the reason that you use white lithium spray grease. The, it stays there. It clings there. It's pretty much waterproof if you put a bunch of it on. And then it keeps it from getting water in and it lubricates. Lithium grease is best for metal to metal because it stays on and it's good lubrication for metal to metal. Now it doesn't clean off rust or anything like that so it's a great preventative. If you already have rusty ones then you'd use WD-40 at least to clean them off for a while and then when they stop squeaking you could put lithium on top of that later. But if you don't have a problem yeah the lithium's great and if you do it once a year twice if you want to be a fanatic it's, it's no big deal but it will keep it from getting rust in the first place. Lithium's great for metal to metal contact. Kim D says, hey Scotty, thanks a lot for the great videos. Can I ask you something off topic? What brand of model cam and mic do you use? All right, here we go. It's my Panasonic. Here it is, right here. I don't even remember the number. HCWX970. It's like a $900 camera. Fantastic camera. And the microphone, there's the microphone. It's a Rode. Not a cheap microphone, but it's not super expensive. And I use a dead cat over it. This setup it's the best setup I've ever had in my life. I started out, of course, with they didn't have these things out when I started out. They had ones that had twirling mini DVDs inside that it would burn. Used a ton of electricity. It had very low format. This thing will shoot in 4K if you really want to. I mean, 4K is kind of overkill for YouTube. You don't need to really use full 4K. You can shoot 1080p or all kinds of stuff, and it'll look perfectly fine on YouTube. I've been using those cameras. I got four of them now. Uh, the things are virtually indestructible. And the company itself is pretty cool because I dropped one and it broke the monitor on it. The monitor got broken. Uh, I sent it in. Hey, it was less than a year old. They fixed the thing for free. Panasonic. I got to say, great cameras, great people. I'm really happy with those things, you know? I actually bought those, you know, all my car stuff. I generally get for free now because the companies want me to use them in their videos. But I actually buy my own cameras. I don't have any kind of affiliation with any of the camera people or microphone people. Find the best ones. And I'm so happy with that. I got four of them. So if one breaks, I got plenty of backups. They work a lot better than your phone. I mean, I got a fancy uh, Samsung S10, too. And you can shoot videos with it what you want. 
but it just doesn't have the lens and the setups that these things have. You really want to make serious videos. Get a serious camera like this Panasonic. Don't use your phone. The phones, the lighting and stuff isn't quite as good. You can't mess around with editing quite as well and change whatever format you want, the speed and stuff. You can do this on the fly with a phone camera. It just doesn't work as good. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.